So I guess the purpose of this is just to, I guess you guys can just ask me questions or um, I'll do my best to answer it. To play in Brazil, I would love to. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully later in the year. You see me? Cool. <laughs> yeah, we were trying to get to South America at the end of last year, actually, but um Yeah, things fell through but yeah, we'll definitely try and get there at least this year or the start of next year, hopefully. Romania, cool. <laughs> Skyrim, yeah, it's destroying my life. It's addictive. So what I should do, I probably should <coughs> answer a few of the questions that have been emailed. Band happy. What is that? Okay, I'll just go over some of these questions that I've already got. Okay, if I can find them. Okay, Cody Morse asked, What guitar gear did you use on the new album? Guitar, amp, cab, mic placements, and also the interface and program used for tracking, mixing, mastering, and any other gear used. Jeez, it's <laughs> a long one. Um, now the guitar that I used was uh, an Ormsby multi-scale, it's like the uh, the fan fret uh, one. Um, it's just like a standard series that he's done, kind of like a prototype at the moment. Um, the preamp that I used was a triaxis, a Mesa Boogie triaxis, and I had that running through a, uh, a 290 power amp, and that was just running into a, a Marshall cab, I think, just a, a 4x12. Uh, the mic placements. Uh, I just used a, uh, a Beta 57 and I think it was an M88, like a kick drum, kick drum mic, and that were pretty pretty close on the uh, on the speaker. Um, this was all reamped actually, so I recorded it all clean tone first. Um, <coughs> yeah, and I used Pro Tools. Uh, at home where I was doing all the the guitar tracking and all that kind of thing. Uh, I was just using Pro Tools 8 running through a Digi, Digi 002, so a pretty simple setup. But down at the studio where I did a bit of mixing and uh, we tracked all the drums down there as well. Uh, that was Pro Tools 9 running through a Mo2 and uh, just like an old Harrison uh, desk like uh, from the 80s or something. Um, yeah, that was like an old analog desk. Um, as far as mastering goes, I'm not too sure because uh, yeah, I didn't actually master this one. I just mixed it, so I did all the tracking and mixing, but I didn't master it. Uh, Jackson Wright asked, "How do you like playing the fan frets?" Yeah, fine. <laughs> um, they probably look a little bit more difficult to play than what they actually are. They feels quite natural under your fingers because your hand kind of does that, like, you know, moves that way quite naturally. Um, 
Stephen Lee or Stephen Leo. Asked what my top f five Aussie bands were. Oh, sorry, top five yeah Aussie metal bands of all time were. God, I don't know. Probably damaged. Probably yeah, you know, the ones that probably influenced them, influenced us the most would probably be damaged and Abramelon. Um. Yeah, there's plenty of others. There's uh, the Amenta are a pretty good. You know, they're a really good band, really professional. They're a bit newer. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of others. I just can't think of them at the moment. <laughs> uh, where did the name Psychroptic come from? Um, doesn't actually mean anything. It's just a made-up word. A mate of ours just. I think it was before our first gig. Um, we didn't actually have a name, so we just had to try and figure out something that weekend, what you know, what our name would be, and we couldn't think of anything. And our mate just sort of said, "Oh, I can make up a a name easy. What about Psychroptic? So yeah, we just went with that, <laughs> and it's still our name. Um, sorry, that question was Isaac Lunsford. Jesse James, really? Yeah. He asked what my f three favourite uh, death metal vocalists are. God, I'm not too sure. Don't listen to a lot of death metal. <laughs> um, favourite albums of 2011? Not too sure. I really dug the new Decapitated, that was really cool. Um, probably the Devon Townsend one, that was pretty cool as well. Uh, Patrick Thomas asks, uh, when writing a song are there any limits? For example, do you guys <coughs> ever want to experiment with other genres like jazz, ambient, black metal? Um, and if so, can we expect any surprises like that on the new album? Um, well we kind of all have our other outlets for our music anyway, like me and Dave still play, you know, we play in a black metal band, so we, you know, get our fix of black metal there. Um, I'm starting a jazz band, and so I can kind of <laughs> use all my jazz chops in that. Um, so we kind of just try to stick to metal, you know, with, with the, with the psychroptic stuff, but I'm sure a lot of things spill over into it. Um, uh, Niek Boonman asks, why didn't you use kick triggers on the Isle of Disenchantment? Um, pretty much at that point we didn't really know what they were. <laughs> we didn't actually know what we were doing, we just went into the studio and mic'd it all up and just recorded it. And that's kind of how we thought everything was done. Um, so it was a bit of a, <coughs> that was more of a learning experience, that album. Um, yeah, and, and why the lack of solos? Just can't be bothered. <laughs> Is the new album going to be more groove oriented? Um, yeah, I think so. The structures are a lot simpler. Uh, the riffs are still quite technical, but um, I think because the structures are a bit simpler, it's probably a bit, uh, um, a bit more groovy. And Ryan Hale asks, ever consider a second guitarist? Open tunings or extended range guitars? I'm not too sure what extended range guitars means. But, um... <coughs> I've never really had the, the need for a second guitarist, I guess because we don't do solos or anything. Um, and we've already always tuned to drop D, so it would just be too much hassle to try and change our tuning because we'll be just changing guitars all the time. Um, that's kind of all I've got here. And Patrick. <laughs> okay.
I didn't smoke bud. <laughs> <coughs> That's Cam and Pippo's job. Another oh, jazz band. Um, well, I'm just doing a little jazz duo with my girlfriend, so it's just like jazz covers, but I'm also working on like a fusion thing, so I've only got like three songs for that at the moment, but um, hopefully at some point I'll be able to get that out. I'm just sort of doing it in my own time whenever I can. Nah, no, cheers, man. <laughs> Oh, okay, seven or eight string guitars. I've tried playing an eight string guitar. Jeez, it felt like I was trying to play a desk. It was just too big. Just couldn't get my fingers around it. Um, yeah, I have enough trouble with six string guitars. I think seven or eight would just confuse me. And Patrick, you know I don't practice. Like cartoons. Probably Calvin and Hobbes. Um, yeah, there's a pretty good metal scene down here actually. Um, but a lot of the bands don't really venture outside too much. I mean there's a handful of bands that kind of push it a bit and play interstate and stuff. Not too many travel overseas. Um, so it's, I guess it's pretty tricky to sort of get out of here, like more expensive than anything because immediately if we want to play anywhere else it's a plane flight, we can't actually travel by vehicle but um, yeah, I think it's you know quite possible to do it, <laughs> obviously. How's the writing process different? Um, it's pretty similar in most ways, but um, I think the only difference was like we didn't actually have a lot of the riffs finished being written when we actually started tracking the drums. We kind of had ideas and grooves in mind, but then we... Um, yeah, we kind of just mainly worked on the structures and then worked on the riffs after the, the drum beats had kind of been put down so I could actually write a bit more to the drums. Um, also Cam, uh, there's a lot more involvement from Cam and Pepo on this one as well. Cam wrote, um, actually wrote the guts of like two of the songs on it, so there's two on there that um, have a really kind of old school psychoptic vibe because he, uh, he wrote a lot of riffs back in the... Um, back on the first couple of albums. Um, but yeah. So I think it, it hasn't, you know, because of that, it has it does sound a little bit different to the last album. How long do I play daily? Um, I'm kind of forced to play a fair bit because I teach guitar, so... I guess just between lessons I end up just sort of doodling. <laughs> Yeah, Bolverk, that were, oh, that were great. <laughs> Legendary, cult. They were true. No, nah, I probably wouldn't do any solos in Psychroptic just because I don't think it's the sort of band that it would really fit with. Um, you know, if I end up putting one in there, it would almost seem a little bit contrived, I think. Yeah, we were trying to get to South America last um, uh, last year, but that all kind of fell through. So hopefully we can get to you know, Brazil and well, 
all around that area. Maybe at the end of this year or next year. <laughs> I can't drive. I've never learned how to. I've never shot a gun. What's in my CD player right now? It's probably it's probably that new Alice in Chains. Um, good examples of hybrid picking. Check out probably the the beast of them all would be Brett Garsard. Um, yeah, just look it up on YouTube. I'm sure you'll you know any videos <laughs> of him is like a good, really good example of it. Um, my fusion influences, yeah, Brett Garsard, uh, Holdsworth. Really get into Greg Howe. Like he's a really kind of funky uh, fusion player. few verses from the lyrics. God, I don't even know any of the lyrics. Yeah, I think we're going up to Scandinavia. Or maybe near there. Maybe check out tour dates on the um, Psychroptic uh, website. But we're th going through Europe in February, so... Um, yeah, check that out. Yeah, I've heard bits of his new album. <coughs> um, probably preferred uh, his first one. He's doing a lot more kind of weird, kind of Planet Xy kind of stuff on this, which I don't know if that's really my thing, but obviously he's, you know, he's playing still awesome. Favorite beer, Cascade. My influences for creating riffs, probably just old school 80s thrash, <laughs> Megadeth. Um, I'm pretty heavily influenced by Testament actually. I think it's a really cool, cool riff. <coughs> How do we write music? <coughs> um, we used to uh, kind of do it a bit more as a band, just by sort of jamming things out a lot. But um, but now because we're kind of a bit separate, like me, Cam, and Pepe, we all kind of live pretty close. But my brother Dave, he actually lives in Melbourne, so um, obviously jamming together is a little bit difficult. So we kind of just write our own parts, like I'll just write a lot of the riffs and try to put a structure, a vague structure together and just kind of, you know, email click tracks of that to Dave and just see what he reckons and see what he can come up with for it. Um, can be an interesting way to put riffs together actually, or put songs together, just, yeah, doing it totally separate, separately like that. Doesn't work for everybody though. And we're coming back to Melbourne. <coughs> God, I don't know. Probably mid year. Yeah, I think it sounds better than Observant, the new album. Hope it does. <coughs> I reckon I'll do that for 40 bucks. Or maybe 50 bucks. Do I use Guitar Pro? No, I've never used Guitar Pro to r write stuff. I find it too too hard. My philosophy is if you can't really remember a riff that you've written, it's probably not good enough anyway. 
Um, a lot of people just kind of write in random riffs on uh, Guitar Pro. Um, yeah, never really keeping in mind what it's actually going to sound like on a guitar. Ads, I'm not getting any ads. Foster's is shit. <laughs> I don't think of it, like, I think I've only ever tasted it once. I don't think any, um, I don't think any Australian actually drinks it. Yeah, the multi-scale next, just the, um, like the fan frets, so, rather than all the frets being straight, they kind of, well, they kind of fan up the neck, so it's kind of just follows your hand a lot more naturally, how you, your hand would move up the neck. Um, you don't really notice a difference, it probably just feels a little bit more comfortable. Um, it's kind of weird to look at, people probably find it harder to kind of kind of look at and get their head around but once it's you know once you're standing there using it you don't even really notice the angle that the frets are on how long have I had my beard <laughs> yes yeah there should be a um should be a uh, Tassie show for the for the release of the CD. I'm just not. We haven't really got anything booked in, so I'm not sure when that is. No, I can't see any of you. I'm just looking at the chat. <laughs> yeah, I still use the triaxis. Um, I did actually. Yeah. Um, forgot to mention that before, I uh, reamped it through the triaxis, so that's like my main sound on the new album. Um, um, I did blend it though, I blended it just with onboard sound, so I was using a little bit of amplitude, just to kind of get a bit more of a direct kind of, uh, kind of sound. Um, you wouldn't really notice it, <coughs> but um, you probably would notice it if it wasn't there, you know. Yeah, I've been playing drums a fair bit. I just stole a bunch of your sticks. You should know that. <laughs> Do I like deathcore? Um, I've got nothing against it. It's actually helping get a lot of younger kids into heavier music. It's probably not my cup of tea, but you know, people can kind of do what they want. You know, um, I've actually noticed a lot of kind of hardcore deathcore fans, like younger people, have started getting into us, um, and probably wouldn't have if it wasn't for that sort of music. Um, so the kind of good bridging kind of music, I guess, for a lot of the, the younger kids. Uh, am I still friends with Chalky? Um, got nothing. Against him, I just don't don't see him very often. Obviously, <coughs> um, probably wouldn't work with him again though, just because you know obviously it didn't work the first time. So yeah, I mean he's doing his own thing and we're doing ours. So. Oh yes, I am in an awesome cover band. I'm playing a band called Montage, and we play '80s rock, '70s and '80s rock. And I play drums in that actually. My, <coughs> my involvement with. God, I can't, can't even say that name. 
Yeah, it's kind of a mystery, that band. Like, uh, I'm not too sure what's really going on with that. Apparently I'm playing for them, but we'll, <laughs> we'll wait and see. Uh, I think I'm just going to be doing, like, some guest solos or some guest writing for it. So, we'll see what comes from that. Favourite country? Um, hmm. I don't know, I think um, Germany's cool, got some cool memories from there because we played some uh, really big festivals there, but also really like Indonesia and China, just the more obscure kind of places that we played just because there's nothing like them, they're really, really different. We really like playing. Um, you know, yeah, places that they're completely different to to home, you know. Am I a fan of Kylie Minogue? <laughs> of course. I say hello to your mum for me. Um, nah, we can't, we don't make a living off Psychroptic, you know, it only just kind of pays the way for itself, you know, so, we all have to work, um, so yeah, that's why I teach guitar, and barely make a living out of it. No, yeah, I'm sure the new spawner possession should be cool, looking forward to that. The C word. I don't think women like being called that out here. But, um, I don't know. I think blokes kind of seem to use it a bit more affectionately towards each other, so. Yeah, I love playing video games. <laughs> it's my favourite pastime. I waste too many hours on those things. Especially Skyrim. That's what I've been playing lately. I think I'm level 43 or something. Have I ever been in a Turkish prison? <laughs> Not that I know of. That's water was tea, but I just refilled it with water. Um, what, what type of pedals do I use? Um, I just use a, um, just use a noise gate at the moment actually, I just kind of use onboard sound of whatever amp I'm running through. Um, usually if I can help it I try to use like a 5150 or something like that. Um, uh, there is a pedal that I'm thinking of getting actually which is called a Pinnacle uh, made by Wampler I think um, it sounds a lot like a 5150 that would be handy to have whenever I don't um, have one of those amps and, you know, I can just plug that into anything and it's kind of going to get the same sound I would use my, um, my Triaxis but um, it's just, just too fragile I've just had to get it repaired so many times from touring with it, so I just figured, yeah, fuck it, I'll just leave it at home. Yeah, I saw Tintin, that was awesome. Did you see it? What's my favourite tone for a car horn? I like the poire.
Um, when do we plan to tour the US? Don't think we've got anything on the cards at the moment, but um, yeah, probably look out later on in the year. My favourite video game of all time. Jeez. Oh, Maybe Ocarina of Time, Zelda. That was pretty cool. Yeah, we've um, yeah we've toured with a lot of bands that we used to look up to a lot when we were, when we were younger. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, Master Chief is one of my biggest musical influences, but not only that, but um, also one of my biggest influences in life in general. So. My favourite head cab combo. Um, God, I've used a lot of really good ones, so it's hard to kind of pick and choose. I usually go for a 5150 with uh, whatever cab. I kind of like the sound of Marshall cabs, they actually sound really cool because they're nice and bitey. But I just say 5150 because it's generally you can kind of get them everywhere <laughs> and they, they sound really good, but uh, lately I've used um, the Engel Power Balls. Um, I've used them a few times lately and they're, they sound really, really cool. Um, but yeah, I seem to find them a little bit harder to come by. Well, down here anyway. My favourite band would probably be Soundgarden. And Super Unknown's probably the best album of all time. Tassie Music Scene, I reckon it's really cool. Um, I think just a lot of bands kind of need to venture, you know, interstate a lot more. A lot more bands are starting to get out there, but... Um, yeah. ever tripped on stage. Don't think I've completely tripped over, but I've almost tripped over. Plenty of times. Just head banging and losing my balance, getting dizzy. <laughs> How tired are we of being called Tasmanian Devils? I don't know, I think it's alright. I think it's a bit of a, an affectionate title. What got me into death metal? Probably my brother. <laughs> Disseminate, yeah. Yeah, Disseminate was my first band. Um, don't think we'll ever <laughs> re record it. But, um,. Yeah, like Vegemite on crumpets. No, I don't think I've heard the new Cannibal Corpse. I think I heard the last uh, the album before it. Um, but um, I really dug dug the last album that they did. That was really cool. Um, Uh, I don't mind, honestly, I can't tell the difference between a 5150 and a 65x5 or whatever they are. And those EVH amps, they sound, to me, they sound exactly the same again. But, you know, I'm not completely picky about my uh, guitar sound live. <laughs> but, you know, I've had like a 5150 and a 65x5 back, you know, back to back before, you know, to kind of test out and see which one worked the best and I honestly couldn't tell the difference.
Yeah, of course I've heard Sepultura. They're awesome. Yeah, Love Arise. One of the best thrash metal albums. First death metal band I got into. I don't know. It was either Deer Side or a Bremelin or something like that. Um, I'm not sure. I think there may have been talk of uh, taking Ruins to Europe this year, but um, we'll just have to wait and see financially if we can actually do it. Um, there's a couple of black metal bands here in Hobart. Um, and yeah, they're all, all pretty cool. Yeah, I used the the Axe Effects, the, um, uh, what is it, the Fractal? I used that for an entire tour, actually, without any cabs, like, running straight into the PA, just direct. It sounded awesome. Like, our mixer said that that's probably the <laughs> best guitar tone that we've ever had. It sounded a little bit weird on stage for me, just not actually having that amp behind me. But, um, yeah, eventually I'll probably invest in getting one, just because it's a really handy thing to have. You know, if you have trouble getting amps or anything, you know, or getting a good toner out of amps, um, they're definitely the way to go. So many settings on it as well, you can pretty much get any tone you want. Uh, the promo photo. Um, yeah, but we live at the base of a mountain. Um, yeah, it was pretty much just taken up the top of that. Just took a few photos up there. It was a very windy day. Yeah, I really like glam metal. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, to a degree. Um, the first guitar I ever owned was um, uh, Charvel. Uh, Jackson Charvel. Uh, I've still got it. And I pretty much just had that for... Um, and was using that for... Yeah, probably about 10 or 15 years. Um, I think the first three uh, Psychroptic albums were played on that guitar, or recorded on that guitar. Yeah, like I said, we haven't got any um, plans immediately for uh, coming to the States. But, um, yeah, hopefully, yeah, later in the year. Probably much later in the year, probably the end of the year, if anything, so. My favourite band on Nuclear Blast. Um, God. I've actually been a big, really big fan of soil work. Um, and so, uh, a bit more melodic, but really cool, really cool groove. Um, the string skipping stuff. Um, majority of that's done like hybrid picking, so uh, that makes things a lot easier. So you're using your fingers as well as your um, uh, not not only pick like your your fingers that you're holding the pick with, but um, your other f three fingers. So um, you know you minimise the movement, so you don't have to be jumping around with the pick everywhere. So you can make those string skipping uh, 
Or it's a lot easier. Oh, Rob, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that should be cool. That was a fun tour, that one. What if we had the best crowd response? <laughs> Surprisingly, we played a gig probably to... God, there might have been only 30 people there or something in uh, Mongolia. And they were just nuts. They were insane. That's probably the best crowd response we've had. Obviously the best crowd that we've had probably would have been... We played Party Sound a few years ago. Um, yeah, and they responded really well when we played that festival. That was really fun, really scary. A lot of people. Uh, we, didn't, we get a good crowd response. Uh, <coughs> just in our hometown as well. So It's always fun to play down here. Sorry, just fumbling with windows. Yeah, I still get nervous before shows, especially if we haven't played for a little while. Um, usually on tours, like after about five or so shows. I kind of relax a little bit, but, um, yeah, still get the nerves a bit before every every show, pretty much. But say if we haven't played for, you know, a couple of months and we've got a one-off show, um, yeah, I'm usually shit myself. Don't know why, I've played enough shows, it should, shouldn't bother me, but, yeah, it still does. First song that I played on guitar, uh, I don't know what the fir very first song would be. Be, but the first one I can remember would have been uh, Purple Haze, Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd really like to visit Brazil. Really like to go to Russia as well. That would be really cool. Any funny tour stories? Oh, there'd be heaps, but <laughs> I can't think of uh, think of any off the top of my head. Probably just watch our videos, watch our uh, tour videos. I'm sure there's some funny stuff on that. <laughs> Hopefully soon. I guess one day if he ever gets into death metal, maybe he'll, he'll uh, be a guest on an album, but I highly doubt it. Yeah, no worries, we'll text you next time over there. Actually ruined this plan over in Melbourne um, this weekend, so uh, should come along. I'll catch up with you. Um, pretty much just beer. I'm too piss weak. I can barely handle beer. <laughs>
next ruins release. Um, should be relatively soon. We'll finish tracking it all. Just got to mix it. Um, the only tab that I know of for that bitch can't play this is actually in the magazine that it was in. So, um, yeah, I've got no idea. <laughs> Um, what programs did I use? Not too sure what I used on that album, but I, um, there's a, a, a bit of kind of synthy kind of atmospheric stuff on the new one as well. I used Massive for that, and, you know, just with a lot of, you know, guitar effects and stuff like that, so, yeah. Well, I'm probably going to have to leave it there, guys. Um, yeah. So I'll just finish by letting you know that we're touring uh, Europe through February. So check out the site for the uh, for the dates for that one. Um, and also the the new album's going to be available on. Um, yeah, on the Nuclear Blast website, so both the US and the Europe, European one. You can get it on Amazon, and you can get it on iTunes as well. So, yeah, check that out. Cheers for chatting. I'll, um, yeah, hopefully catch all you guys soon. See yous.